Mango After the shower Come light Will be Shining Oh Django You can go Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious, beautiful family. Welcome to the place I call the mental house with me, your host, your minister of soul, Khadija. Okay, I take great pride and pleasure to bring, um, I've been focusing on a lot of authors and I'm going to be presenting them to you all um, and some of their works. One of them is um, who Danielle, uh, and we have um, Black Thelma. There's just a lot of good writers out here, and I think they need to have a spotlight shined on them a little while because as... People of the sun, sometimes we got to remember we've been kissed, okay? And sometimes the baggage that we carry that have been inflicted upon us is not about our own doing. It is by um, just a wicked, wicked beast that has just almost hijacked hijacked I want you to hear me now Hi, they tried to hijack our um, minds you know it was a long time before we was able to read <laughs> kept the because they knew that we were smart okay they knew that we had special powers but instead of acknowledging that and what they did was they just held education from us would not allow us to read books would not allow us to study, would not allow us to even practice our own folk ways and mores and religions and practices. So those are some real hard fundamental truths that uh, the dominant white society got to deal with when it comes to talk about why you know, people like Ron DeSantis and all of them talking about where woke, woke comes to die. What it is, is there's a lot of people, especially in the South, that just cannot deal with the legacy of slavery. They cannot deal. They think they can get around it by making up all these lies. And unfortunately, they haven't learned that no lie can live forever. They cannot even come to grips with the days that their rulership of being the gerrymander of the whole planet is coming to an end. Only not because we weren't a great nation on paper, but because of our hypocrisy and how we've lied and how we've said one thing, gaslighting out the, and then on the other side of our necks, making the reality something so much different. So I had a, a real good article from Black Thelma. And uh, I got to share it with you guys. Every time I get to uh, going through my articles, as y'all know, Mufasa wants to get in on the act. So I had to scream at him to shut his mouth so I can continue with the story. Um, this, this, this is called My First Trip to a Plantation. Uh... It's a very interesting article, and I'm going to read it right now. And I would hope that you would stay to the end. I hope you would take this experience and understand that this is the American experience. This is what America has to deal with. And until she does, nothing good is going to come to her. Nothing. Nothing
I think I like to stay mad. I believe there is a piece of me that wants to that wants to stay enraged. There are chunks of myself disposed to outrage. And it is so on brand for me to visit a scene of a mass of mass murder and exploitation on a much needed vacation. Why would I do that? It makes sense to me that I would take a break from the reverie and shenanigans of Bourbon Street and visit um, the Whitney Plantation located an hour away in the country. The irony that cannot be escaped from his how New Orleans, Louisiana, and the United States at large is connected to plantations that dot the South. These buildings, our country's concentration camps, are the foundation of this land. Let's call it what it is, the concentration camps. The power, wealth, and strength of the United States found its foundation in the rich, fertile lowlands in the states like Louisiana. The institution and industry of slavery is directly connected to the presence of people alive today. As in descendants of this lineage live on lands their ancestors worked mere minutes from the tourist attractions framed as Creole and Southern heritage sites. It enrages me. It enrages me a bit to learn that Whitney Plantation is the only plantation in Louisiana and one of the few in the South dedicated slow, solely to slavery. It speaks volumes about the mass murder, exploitation, and dehumanization of my people that so few remnants preserve that history as is. White people are weak from running away from the truth of history. They are not only weak, but liars and manipulators as well. All of these thoughts and more consume me en route to the plantation as I reflected on my trip in New, in New Orleans, Louisiana. One of the most culturally immersed and racially oppressive cities in the United States of America. Hmm. I wish there was more black people on the tour bus to go to the plantation. I sat in a section of the bus with white people who had accents that sounded like they were from Australia. They were so jovial and happy. There was endless jokes made and the whole scene felt weird to me. Lone black women in the back. A lone black woman, I'm sorry, in the back. On my way to confront the ugly part of my cultural legacy surrounded by benefactors of an international connected system of exploitation. The privilege of a cruise and foundational wealth allowed their liberty as tourists, the same costs made prohibitive for people like me closely related to the history. It was just one of those scenes, you know, I was grateful for the one lone black couple that was on board. The Louisiana countryside, like the countryside of the South in general, is so hauntingly beautiful. The endless expanses of greenery, the fields of cotton and sugar cane, the grazing pasture for cattle, the enhancing equality of land without people, without dwellings. The wild child in me wished the bus could pull over to the side and I could just run through all that endless greenery. The driver had pointed out that plantations that popped up on both sides of the road, they were deserted on large plots of land. 
and relatively close, it was a neighborhood of pretty death camps that we like to call them plantations. White people always got a fancy name for something hideous that they trying to do to you. Upon arriving at Whitney Plantation, we enter a museum with exhibits discussing the slave trade in Louisiana. I read as much as I could while being so incredibly eager, eager to start on the self-guided tour of the grounds by myself. I don't think anyone can ever be an expert on slavery. I didn't read that much in a museum that I hadn't heard before. It was still an incredibly beautiful, detailed exhibit and puts into much needed perspective the backstory of these hunted grounds. Leaving the museum, my first step took me to a church house. Founded in the 1700s, I was struck by the presence of little statues of black children. These statues were scattered all across the grounds of the plantation and were said to symbolize the real people who lived there and worked there. Seeing those little statues brought it back to me clearly how many black children worked these plantations, these deaf colonies, denied a childhood, subjected to the same intense and cruel treatment as their parents. It impresses upon you just, just how cruel it all was. To think little beautiful babies were born to be beasts of burdens and not children, not even people. The world still thinks of little black kids wrong in America. It is not uncommon for little black kids to get shot down like dogs and blamed for their own death. Tell me again, just how removed we are from slavery times. These same people put people in jail for child abuse. These same people want you to assimilate to their behavior, which is liars and master manipulators. They can't fix anything because they can't face nothing. They are fragile. Thus, white fragility. That's why they want to take history out of school. That's why DeSantis is so freaking stupid. Over in Florida, he want to stop the immigration. Well, you seeing right now just how this country is ran. It's not ran by these arrogant, white, pompous lawmakers that just want to figure out a way to shorten your life and fatten their pockets. I don't care what party. If it's the one of the one of or the other of a two party, Democrat or Republican, that's just a distraction. And how many of us are foolish enough to fall for that? How many of us are so stupid and so blinded with our own hatred that you cannot even um, see your white ancestors putting babies out in the field to work? So y'all want to skip through all that history. You don't want to think about it. You don't even want to talk about it. You want to take it out because you can't face it. Too much your kids' feelings may be hurt. Even though we get our feelings hurt every day living amongst beasts. That's what we'll do. We are living amongst beasts. Now, I'm just, I'm just bold enough to say it. Ain't too many bold enough to say it. We are living amongst the great bloodshedder of all times. The great gaslighter of all times who killed people all over the world, cut off their hands, cut off their heads, and then blame them. Blame them for what happened. Master projectors. Liars, thieves. And then they have the nerve to be in charge and incarcerate other people who have done way less, trust me, way less. 
Leaving the church, I passed a dwelling labeled Overseer's House. It was in usage from 1820 to 1860. I could only wonder what type of wretched individuals they were. Lowly, likely lower class whites, probably illiterate, probably alcoholics or an alcoholic and a mean son of a bee. I feel as though that job was a description of an overseer. Be mean. Keep the enslaved people in line. Ex exert the most punishment and cruelty. Be worse than the master. The overseer, a dumb brute, filled with his own self-hatred and sense of lower class rejection, was a man with something to prove. The plantation was a nothing but scandals, and I can't help but imagine the overseer not only sexually exploiting the enslaved people on the ground, but having his way, as they say, with the lady of the house, if she willed it. Gotta convince himself that he is just as much as a man as his boss, right? The overseer was very much hated and likely he hated himself a tons too. Next, I approached the big house. A two-story white dwelling in the Creole cottage style. To be honest, I expected much more, but I also acknowledge that using my 2023 lens in Hollywood to assess the grand nature of a 1700s home is really silly. The house felt old and rickety, I was shown what would have been the master's bedroom and an outside patio room on the same floor that I was told that they would sleep there during the hot weather. The ceiling had one of those European paintings done. I think of generations of white men laying there in their comfortable four-poster canopy beds with a slave child fanning him. A goblet of wine by his side. Plotting. Plotting. On how to maximize his profits. Who to breed with whom. Whom to sell for debts. How to maximize his name and presence in the Creole. <laughs> bougie. It just, this sounds like Nick Cannon, don't it? Plotting on how to maximize his profits, who to breed with whom, and who to sell for debts. Wow. Like I said, that's where that behavior came from. The Whitney Plantation was started by Germans, but I imagine by 1800 in Louisiana, with the dominance of the Creole influence, Origin was negligible. Race mattered. White, black, and the smattering of red that hadn't been decimated. Walking further along after leaving the big house, I passed the blacksmith shop, the jail, an outdoors steel dwelling that looks like a porta potty. And then finally, the slave cabins. Two statues of little black kids were on the porch. There was a small kitchen area, two bedrooms with wooden cots as, as beds. I wondered about the people who lived there for their whole lives, who worked every single day, back-breaking, demeaning work in the excruciating Louisiana heat. It was so hot on the day I visited. Oh, my God. The sun just beats down on you relentlessly in Louisiana, committed to burning and heating you up with humidity. I can't imagine how damn strong my people were being out there in those fields, day in, day out, from can't see morning to can't see night, making their captives rich, 
sending his daughters to France, allowing his wife to buy dresses from New York, all off the black back breaking work from black bodies. Bred like cattle against their will, fed the least, denied rest, denied play, denied agency. We will never ever know the plight of the enslaved ones. How could you understand being made into a beast? Made to breed yourself like a beast. To become beasts. Like just to survive? As serene as those grounds felt, I couldn't help but think of the spirits that must haunt that damn place. Slavery was very demonic. Its players were the wickedest that have ever been created. Slavery is still much with us in so many ways. The problem with the United States is that it's always been trying to run away from this history. And now it is constructed in our psyche. As something removed, as something alien that has no bearing on who we are today as a country. And this just is not true. Because see, let me tell you, you can only lie for so long. And if you're not the devil, then you would accept that. That your day of reckoning is here. No lie can live forever. Not doubling, tripling, and down on the lies that you tell. Can't heal a nation that way. Can't heal a people that way. You can't even heal yourself that way. As I closed out the tour, I happened to, uh, upon a memorial of enslaved fighters in the 1811 German Coast Riots. This was a coordinated uprising of enslaved men along the southern Missouri coast trying to fight back against slavery. This is for all you weak-ass black men today. You need to hear this. Y'all get mad at Cynthia G., and sometimes she can be real rough. But I understand. I'm not saying I agree with everything she says. But I truly understand. Where are the brave uh, men that stand up as freedom fighters? Who? Men like a uh, Kyborn? Or Hakeem Jeffries, who are in a situation that just watch their pockets get fat. They don't have no bearing on how your everyday life is. They don't have no, I mean, not no bearing, no concern about that. No. How about the other one? The, the, the real monkey. The one in the Supreme Court. Do you think he gives a damn? I bet his parents and all these people that allowed him to get where he got on affirmative action is spinning in their graves. But as freedom fighters, we really know we got a certain element of our community that we got to deal with first before we can do anything positive, constructive, and to change our condition. Like implementing the drop squad those that know don't tell and those that tell don't know for real for real again it's haunting to see and think about these freedom fighters these brave men who put their lives on the line trying what so many before them had tried
resisting the tyranny and the insanity of white people's dominance of their lives. Too many ignorant people speak and make jokes of docile and subservient slaves. But these people were far from that. You think they wanted to be enslaved by some damn people they had heard about, knew about, but in fact thought them to be inferior to them. And now they being enslaved by them? By some wicked dealings in Africa? Some wicked kings? That put this in motion? Of course they didn't know a, a concept of chattel slavery. And they thought that as indentured servants we would one day do our time and leave and come back to the motherland. But they made a deal with the devil. And you can't never trust that. Ask the Native American. How many treaties that they signed with them? How many did they honor? Ask them. I mean, again, too many ignorant people speak and make jokes of docile and subservient slaves. And I'm here to tell you that these people were far from incessantly passive. They found ways to resist. They found ways to assert their humanity. And they prayed to the spirits, to gods, to the gods, to God. They cursed the master and his lineage. In Africa tradition, lineages are cursed. See, lineages are cursed. Just something to think about. We paid for the sins of our ancestors. And we received blessings through the same train of fate. Leaving the plantation, returning to New Orleans, I was once again enchanted by the beautiful rural countryside. We passed a few small black communities, neat, Little dwellings nestled along levees. Establishments comp I mean promising the best gumbo signs saying Buena Vu an endless expanse of green. I thought of the legacies we inherit in our cultures, how we build up so many facets of our culture. And we don't always go back and touch the roots. I think every black person in America, if they were able to, should go and visit a plantation one day. I think we need a plantation act that designate these sites as what they are. Old settlements that were concentration camps for profit. White people should not benefit anymore from profits garnered by plantation slavery. You need to be as sick at the thought of a wedding at a plantation as you would be at a wedding in Auschwitz. Plantations that are next to settlements, towns, where the descendants reside should be given those funds in forms of monthly, if not yearly checks. America has to come clean. It has to look at itself, its killer self, directly in the mirror, accept its crimes, and air out the dirtiest laundry. That's hard. Fragility makes that impossible almost. I mean, there's no way around it. There's just no way around this. America has to come clean. It has to look at itself in the mirror. It has to accept its crimes and air out the dirtiest of its laundry, like you want everybody else to do. And you got the nerve to put yourself in a position of authority. 
but you're not willing to face your criminality. You're not willing to face your crimes. Yet you sit up in court systems all over the country every day and incarcerate people because you say they don't take a responsibility for their behavior. Well, they learn from you. You need to look at yourself in the mirror, accept your crimes, and air out the dirtiest of laundry. The, this country needs therapy. It, 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 it really... And like I said again, this country needs therapy. The founders and fathers and mothers of this country were abusive, were murderers. They were full of crimes. In order to well, gain favor, to be uh, rich, the greedy, you know, and the, the thing about it is you all need therapy to let all this garbage out. Therapy that addresses the largest recipients of America's crimes, namely the black and native populations. Don't only say sorry, that ain't shit. Name your crimes, teach it, be brave, be an example. Stop hiding behind the French statue in the New York Harbor. Own America as the product of white greed, bloodlust, and dehumanization. Free us all from the plantations of false narratives and insulting appeasement because we damn sick and tired of it. We tired of y'all lies. We tired of living with you liars. We're tired of your oppression and we're tired of your inability to face the truth. Oh, what a great nation we could be. Oh, what a nation. Great, like it said on paper. If we could be that beacon of light that stands out in the world, give us your tired, your poor, and allow them to come here and really thrive. Not gaslight. Not be lied to. But be true to what you said on paper. <coughs> Thank you, Black Delma. <coughs> Thank you for this timely article. And, um, again. My first trip to a plantation. All right, I'm out. If you like, this video is kind of long, so if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't it feel good to be free now? Yeah, yeah. Like the birds up in the trees.